Just one more thing. Uh, this list of yours, uh, where should we sign up again? I'm afraid if you don't know, it's not my place to tell you, sir. Uh, Excusez-moi, uh, the regulations, you know. You hear that, Sonny? I do, Marty. I do. I'm gonna lose my crest from this guy. J Just don't get too excited, Marty. Not tonight. Anyway, uh, thanks, pal. Look, Lewis, that bouncer over there. Well, yes, he is a bit intimidating, but his manners are impeccable. Am I right? Yes, indeed, but it seems tonight we're not on his list. Oh, I see. <clears throat> oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You'd like to go in, but he... Yeah, something like that. No, 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 no problem at all. Come with me, I'll t t talk to him. Much obliged, pal. Yeah, thanks, Bunny. Excuse me. Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell's wrong with you, Marty? What? Did I say something wrong? Sir, how'd you do? Everything's fine, Mr. Aworth. Good. <clears throat> Uh, look, this noble pair of p p pigeons are my friends. They're on the list, okay? Merci la mon, sir. Uh, and as for you, <clears throat> you owe me one, gentlemen. Thanks, old pal. It was my p p pleasure to help you, as always. The jazz overwhelmed us. There was no band in sight. Yet the music seeped from the walls like years of cigarette smoke and the smell of spilt whiskey. Behind the bar, rows of fancy bottles reflected the harmonious voices of pretty dames and the clinking of crystal glass. It was the kind of place that makes you drunk, even if you've never had a sip. A dangerous place for someone like me. No matter how alien I felt, it was strangely like coming home. Welcome to the Tsar. Well, here we are. Mother of... I take you to the nicest places, eh, sweetheart? Oh, does it mean you're buying, honey? Don't even think about it. Oh, men these days. So, we're here to find a dame called Natasha. I have a hunch she won't be hard to find. Let's mingle and try to avoid suspicion. Just like always. No, Marty, not like always. This time it's for real. So, where the hell is Natasha? Well, let's ask that stud over there with those nice gals. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. Oh man, your sense of humor is bad as ever. You just need to get used to it again. What if... Uh... Fox is a wolf who sends flowers. What? Oh, nothing. I read it somewhere. Fascinating. I didn't know you could read. Ha ha ha. Very funny. I was hoping to have missed the main event. You're a rusty old cock, that's why. <laughs> so says the little butt jam. But what? That's not even a word. It is now, all because of you. You should... Uh, you know, Sonny, sometimes you're like an evil little child.
This guy is certainly not a gangster henchman. Of course he's not. Oh, I know this fodder guy. He was kind of good in Death of the Horse. <laughs> You've seen every cluckin' movie. You know, Laura and I go to the movies a lot. When was the last time you went? Exactly 12 years ago. Oh, you remember that precisely? Let me guess. Molly? Yep, our very first date. I see. What did you watch? I don't remember. I just remember her and nothing else. You're a clucking poet. I mean it. Another lupus movie. Jeez, is there nothing today they're not trying to sell with this guy? Whoa, don't be rude, Sonny. Lupus is a timeless genius. Have you seen Predator City? God, I'm still getting chicken bumps. But wait, who's that next to him? Cassandra Ruby Fay. Nah, never heard of her. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Oh, gods, even her name makes me go weak in the knees. Watch your blood pressure, pal. Don't mind me, just women and guns are my only weakness. <laughs> no shit. You think this is one of those movies where the femme fatale gets everything in the end and the poor detective's left stranded? Yep. Just like life. do really he looks like a coat hanger to me uh that was actually worse than the previous joke <laughs> i try she has pretty long legs i mean pretty and long legs for a squirrel but i don't want to be prejudiced we're not here to stare at pretty squirrels. We're here to investigate, remember? Hey, there's Philmar. Who? Oh, yes. Philmar. Because that's what he calls himself, right? You know him well? We had some seriously wild cases together, yes. Mainly in Averia, way before Clawville. Another place, and another life. Sounds good. Like the blurb of some cheap Pulp Fiction book. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. But the old bird's worth saying hi to. Well, well, if it isn't the great detective, Marlowe. Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. Okay. Mr. Dumbass alias Phil Marlowe. So says someone who tried to go undercover with the Feather Pillow Mafia is a turkey. Right, Mr. Turk Cayman? Hey, that was a long time ago. I was young. And I stick to my principles and my stupidity. Phil Marlowe and that's that. Don't rile me up, you old fart. Okay, okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm a little clapped tonight. Uh, I know the feeling, pal. By the way, what are you two doing here? You stick out a bit. Are you here for- We stick out? Man, you look terrible. Like someone who sat on an electric pole. Don't even ask. I feel exactly like that. You want a case? Five feet tall, half of that legs. Angelic voice, demonic eyes, just the usual. Oh boy. 
you? Something like that. Just don't know the exact numbers yet. A dame named Natasha. She called us here. If I'm not mistaken, the joint is hers. Yeah, she owns the joint, amongst others. Well, good luck, guys. That broad has a reputation. She's not the kind to toy with, if you know what I mean. Any useful information? For free? Stop clucking around, Philmar. All right, but just because of the old days. Look for me after you've talked to her. You wouldn't understand what I have to say about her before then. Don't leave unless you're thrown out, in which case, you know the drill. We don't know each other, I'll deny you in a blink. Good to see you too, old pal. We'll be back. Whiskey's kid, and no horsing around. I've never heard that one before. Uh, Sonny, you gotta drive, you know? Yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, Longface, give me a glass of tap water, too, okay? Yes, sir. Coming right up. That wasn't exactly what I meant. As I recall, you're always bragging about hiding your shotgun in your coat so well, no one can see it. Sure. Maybe I have it with me now. <sighs> what? Well, do you see that bottle, Marty? That's a 28-year-old Golden Eagle whiskey. Of all the furry gods, you're right! And they've just left it on the bar. Someone ordered it, got so drunk he forgot all about it. So, so we're confiscating it as evidence. <laughs> yeah, well, more like stealing it. But if it's easier for you... Ah, uh, you're twisted, pal. But to be honest, I've no objections. Tell me, hey breath, have you seen Natasha tonight? Not yet, sir, but she's coming on soon. Well, can you tell me anything about Mr. Ibn Wessler? Sir, I... I don't want to. What about, let's see, five dollars, maybe? But, sir, you haven't even paid for your drinks yet. Yeah, yeah, stop riding on the details, Big Nose. You do your job, and we'll do ours, okay? I mean, we're not here for work, of course. We're just here to relax. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just a little fun. Of course, gentlemen. Sonny, I know it's not my place, but Laura's father went to that guy when his, you know, problems uh, had gone too far. You're treading on thin ice, Marty. No, I just... <laughs> Look, fellas at the station are talking, you know? All talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boil took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Look, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Good. And let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Sure, Marty.
Yeah, just one more thing, Philmar. <laughs> I see you haven't changed a bit. Do you think we're walking into a trap? You always had good instincts. You know, I couldn't figure out this Natasha woman, even when I worked for her. Then the trouble is bigger than I thought. Just take care of yourselves, and don't leave your guns out of reach. Oh, that's never happened. Yeah, this crazy cock even sleeps with his. You're welcome to the club, Brother Bird. Take care, Phil. You too, old fart. Just act nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me, Marty McChicken. Oh, God. What a pleasant surprise. The Rooster Cop is in person. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is, uh... He... Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Hello, boys. So, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um... <clears throat> We, we were, um, just in the neighborhood, and... Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart. Nata oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood-red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, indeed. It's, a uh, nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter, but to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so he's rather tired. If you would excuse us. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. <laughs> Listen, detective. If you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? All right, Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. I'm not as exciting as people tend to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to mob boss. How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's just provocation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? Everybody knows Mr. Hayworth. He's an antique piece of furniture in this city, so to speak. Only a bit worn out. It's not my fault that he's so much in debt, Detective, but the name of his family still rings quite loud in Clawville. Is that still worth anything? The name is just a name, of course, but the man behind the name is another matter, Mr. Featherland. You're a pragmatic rat. Thank you. Look, Detective, if you want to know something, just ask. All right, Mr. Wessler. 
Has your assistant been working for you long? Are you talking about me? Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. Let me answer your question then. I've been in Mr. Wesley's employment for six months. Why do you ask? Oh, just uh, routine questioning, you know. Most of them aren't good for anything. Just killing time. It sounded rude to me. Yeah, please forgive a detective. Olivia's a real firecracker. Hmm. Wessler is a tricky guy. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about him, so I have to be cunning. I can't just... How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we... No, not quite. I'm sorry to hear that. You seem a very busy man. May I ask what you do? Eh, it's, uh, uninteresting. Would you elaborate? Eh, I got a small share in the meat substitute business. If the new product works, eh, maybe we can make your job easier. You mean reduce predation in Clawville? There are such plans, uh... If you're interested, talk to Olivia, my assistant. She's an expert in what she does, uh, unlike me. Thank you. That's it for now. You're very taciturn, Mr. Wessler, though I've heard you're quite the speaker. Look, I'll gladly talk to anyone about business, and even happy to talk about art. But uh, I'm no fan of interrogation on a night out. Are you even on duty? Sorry for any offense, Mr. Wessler. Let's talk about something else. Wessler is tougher than I thought, and he's secretive. Don't you find these messages dangerous? That specific word is, uh, it's insulting and obscene, and unfortunately, everyone could see it on the street. I'm sure you know they painted it on the wall. I know. Well, yeah, it's unpleasant, but no threat in itself. I put it down to some jealous showgirl or uh, a deluded fan. No Jealousy can be... Yeah, most crazies are harmless. You know that firsthand? Anything else? Business going well, Mr. Wessler? Eh, depends on which one. Real estate, catering, charity, protection, extortion, bribing cops, contraband, the... Funny guy. How are the casinos? <laughs> Fine, thank you. Yeah, gambling has always been a good business. Damn, if only I knew that. I heard gambling was illegal. And I've heard you're not on the force at the moment. Then it seems we have a fair fight. On uneven ground, Mr. Featherland. I'm not sure I'd stand on it for long, if I were you. That was candid. Yeah, I'd try to be clear. Is everything all right between you and Natasha? Yeah, you don't beat around the bush, do you? Hm. Understandable, I guess. Naturally, our relationship is stable and perfect. I'm the setting, she's a gemstone. Yeah, if you know what I mean. I rarely hear such poetry, but uh, I understand exactly what you mean, Miss. So, you have your answer. No recent friction? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? It would make my job easier. Yeah, it would only lead you astray. So be glad that I Ibn is quick-tempered, and I can use that to my advantage. I've confounded and softened him with my previous questions. Now it's time to be specific and ruthless. Would you be willing to testify at the station? You're joking, right? 
Maybe I can get you an invitation. Believe me, you'd love it. The coffee's good, but the chairs are kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, you have a peculiar sense of humor. It doesn't work. Yeah, I guess you're right. Is she completely alone when she's there at the weekend? As I've told you, Natasha's a free woman, eh? She's an adult. She doesn't need an escort. Or, uh, she didn't need one until now. Are you afraid for her? You know, a big star like her, alone in that house? I never said a black car doesn't drive by two or three times a day, but, uh, it's just caution. Huh. I'm not a monster after all, am I? I suppose not. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Yeah, I know what you're getting at, but I'm 100% sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Hmm, illegal gambling nights. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy by the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always... So, can we meet your lady? Mm, I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, we should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh. Please, take a seat. The show's gonna start soon. Tino Featherland. I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. More or less? Sometimes less is more, Mr. Featherland. Ahem. <clears throat> you were amazing, dear. As always. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? But of course. Ibn will be back soon. We'll have a few minutes to talk. Then he'll end the conversation and throw you both out. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, we're not that easy to get rid of. Doesn't matter who's trying, believe me. <sighs> Doesn't matter, he'll do it. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want a scene. My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come along. Hey! I understand. You know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I 
don't have time, Mr. Featherland. Oh, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go, before he comes back. I knew she was trouble the first time I saw her.